right at 605 and the conservation commission meeting will come to order first order of business is the approval of minutes from previous meetings and we have two uh, the first one is from february 14th the regular meeting i'll make the move to the minutes well, i have um one comment or correction it's under um, public comment just um, to change Lily Pond Road to Coles Pond Road there are two instances of that and that's all I had I had um underneath conditional use permit requests um, item B the second paragraph M Brown notes that the submitted plan indicates the trees to be cut at seven it's ten total three are um, in the zero to 50 foot and seven are in the 50 to 100 foot good catch another one um, just before let's see the very last uh, sentence um, under item three um, about s Collins removes to table both requests it should be D Smith Canyon not s Smith Canyon <laughs> Any other amendments or comments? Now would you like the motion? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. As amended? As amended. Okay, if there's a motion to accept the minutes as amended, is there a second? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. The minutes are approved. The next minutes are the February 27th workshop meeting and <clears throat> I have no comment on them looking for a motion if no one has any amendments I make a motion to accept the, the minutes of the workshop if there's a motion to accept is there a second all right all those in favor minutes are approved thank you <clears throat> next item is public comment and <clears throat> we have no one here from the public so uh, the item three is conditional use permits of which we have none and the next item is new business item a land use and natural resources master plan chapter workshop with Stratford Regional Planning Commission not sure your mic is on hi everyone <laughs> Thanks for having us again. Um, as a reminder, I'm Autumn Scott from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. I do a lot of our environmental projects and uh, community engagement. And this is my colleague, Lisa Murphy. And I'll let her. Uh, I, and uh, I'm a senior planner at a uh, uh, regional planner at Stratford Regional Planning Commission. And she's humble, but she has a wealth of knowledge in the field and is so <laughs> great to be a partner on this project with me. <laughs> so I just wanted to start. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, we went through the uh, progress update on the master plan goals. Um, so this time I'd like to go through the recommendations from the natural resource assessment um, and just make sure we're not missing anything and 
go through and see what's been accomplished and maybe what needs uh, more research to identify if any progress has been completed. Um, so I think we can go in a similar format and just go section by section. Um, and I've put map 12 up there, which is the map that is referenced throughout the recommendations. Um, so we can see that as we go along. So the first section is landscape level considerations. Um, and it talks about priority areas A through H on that map 12. And you can you can kind of see hopefully you can see the letters uh, they're circled in blue on the map there those areas A through H. Um, so the first recommendation asks or identifies um, that additional research needs may need to be identified at these areas to refine boundaries. Uh, are we aware of any studies or additional research that's been completed at those areas? Um, actually, that verbiage is a little bit broad. Um, if you have a better understanding of the thrust of that, um, then please let me know. But what what are the targeted areas? So there are those target areas on the map there in blue, outlined in blue. Um, and I do believe. Oh, okay. One second. Additional research. Um, I don't. I don't think additional research needs to be done with those. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah, and I would say um, I know that a lot of this is based off of the previous coastal conservation plan, so that has been updated. So there is new data available that relates to all of these, you know, the wildlife action tiers, um, and that. Yeah, the areas of uh, co-occurrence and priority, I don't think really were impacted by the updates. I think these, these are still um, relevant, with a couple exceptions, like uh, B there is, um, I think that's um, Sunningdale, is it? That's been, um, Conserved, that's an easement. Um, and uh, D, looks like it's Mass Point Dam, that's conserved. Well, that's good progress, I'd say. Um, so would you like to see these priority areas identified again on the new map set? Yes. Great. All right, number two says preserve large and contiguous blocks of natural undisturbed vegetation and connect with undeveloped lands on adjacent parcels. And I think that relates to a lot of what we discussed last time. Would you all say that's still relevant? Yes. Determine which wildlife species the city desires to plant habitat corridors or strips of protected land for and prepare a site-specific wildlife assessment to ID corridors with sufficient width to provide adequate cover through a property or a section of the city. Um, so again, we know the wildlife action tiers and corridors are um, layered onto that co-occurrence map. So is this something that has been done? And if not, is it something you're still interested in pursuing specifically, you know, tracks for habitat corridors? Um. Identification of corridors has been done, but not specific to species. And I'm not sure that that that's important to us as as much as just preserving corridors in general. All right. Established. But everyone else, please speak up. <laughs> Yes, feel free to shout. 
Number four, establish large conservation areas by locating conservation land close to other patches of conservation land and natural areas. I think this is a continuing theme, you know, contiguous parcels uh, preserved and protected. So keep that yeah. noted. And, and we did um, acquire land on Lily Pond, which is adjacent to other easements. And it's kind of, it, there's a, if you follow the wetland up south to north through the city, um, there's a whole string of uh, conserved land through there. So that's, um, I think we're, we're probably doing a good job there. Great. All right. When you say you're doing a good job, does that mean you need yeah, I don't think that it's dead. Um, mm. There are definitely parcels that we'd like to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of yeah. these things I, I see as being ongoing. Yeah. But it's great to hear that some progress has been made. There. Yeah, if anything, it's probably even more important now because we've got some momentum on it, and mm -hmm. it wouldn't be great to get that chopped off by having an important piece of land get uh, bought up and developed. Yeah, we've got we've got a couple places in mind now, so great. All right. Uh, number five, increase flood storage capacity by maintaining wetlands and floodplains by preserving in an undeveloped natural state in areas A, C, D, and E on map twelve. So again, that's those priority areas and as you mentioned, D is uh, that area D is in conservation. Um, so that's great. Um, and I would imagine We'd like to continue this one as well, noting that those tracks are still priority conservation areas. Yeah, um, we're also looking at H, um, potentially conserving at least part of that. H Millie Farm? Yeah. Okay. And well, well, part of it is. Yeah. Right, yeah. And what is A? Does anybody know off the top of their head? A is, is that the wellhead? I think that's the wellhead. Mm. Not the wellhead, the um, the water plant. I can double check. Water Street. Okay. Wells. Well Street, yeah. Okay. That makes sense, all right. Okay. So, yeah, part of that is already protected. I, I don't know what you call it. It's all fenced off. <laughs> what, mm -hmm. Does the deed say anything about that protection? I think that was one of the ones that we had found did not have any sort of formal, we couldn't find any sort of formal easement. Do we own 35A? And, and this is area A? Area A, yeah. I mean, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. 35, I don't think I looked into 35A, which is not owned by us, which is next. There's no, a, a large the map there. Right, so the, that's the lot number. Um, so you can kind of see a light line through that orange part of it. We own on the right side. Um, that's the on the, yeah, so that one that the mouse was just on is privately owned. So that's the water treatment facility. And then on the flip side of that line is owned privately. And I don't have any data about it. So yes, still relevant. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Great. Uh, number six, consider conserving areas within the wellhead protection area, including area F on map 12, and any potential public drinking water supply lands in order to protect water resources. So it sounds like that <coughs> from the previous rec is still uh, relevant. Yeah, and that land that we purchased on Lily Pond was with the DES uh, water grant.
So the um, there's still a desire to protect uh, water, you know, especially upstream of the intake on the river and any wetlands that feeds into that. All right, number seven, where possible, establish protective buffers between development and tier one, two, and three wildlife action plan habitat lands. Um, I'll zoom out again, but the co occurrences again relate to those. Well, there's, there's been no effort to, or even talk of. Um, creating buffers with respect specifically to the wild, uh, wildlife action plan land, but um, we've done related work, uh, like we rewrote the um, the wetland ordinance and we included um, uh, vernal pools and adjusted the, um, the buffers. So indirectly that's been supported, but I'm not sure that that's feasible even to create buffers around the wildlife action plan designations. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll put a pin in that one. Maybe there's something um, where we can, you know, point to the co-occurrence maps and, and where wetlands and those habitat tracks co-occur. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a consideration that we, that we look at if you know if we're considering uh, conserving something mm -hmm. all right next is the habitat management section so the first item says utilize management resources available on the taking action for wildlife site for managing grasslands in areas B, G, and H on map 12. Um, are there any formal management of the grasslands? B, G, and H. Yeah. Um, Sunnydale? Yeah, B, definitely. That's being managed for New England cottontail. Um, New England cottontails under the USDA. Um, B, G, and H. H is, um, horse farm. That whole thing is the horse farm. I think some of it's wow. mallard farm, right? G? H. Oh, sorry. I was on G. Um, H, yes, is mallard farm. Yeah. So mallard farm doesn't have any formal mowing regimen or anything. Um, but we are trying to contain in the spread of invasives into the open space. Um, and um, curtail um, damage from motorized vehicles. And you said G is uh, a horse farm? portion of that is a horse farm. Um, I don't know a lot of, it's private, um, so I don't, the question, yeah, it's the, I've, I don't know a lot about it. I just know that it is an equestrian center. Okay. Um, we we didn't talk about that. that. Um, uh, I think it was um, US Forest Service asked us whether we were interested in conserving that. Um, CELT was talking about it with them uh, as part of the the national uh, great, is it the Great Northern Thicket? And um, we declined. It, we just had other priorities. The owner was looking to sell it. Um, 
And so I think that was part of the issue was we just couldn't come up with that, that amount of money. Mm -hmm. I think their ask was only like three times our total available account. Yeah. So made it a little difficult. Fair. Okay, good to know. Um, does that area, so that area doesn't seem maybe like a priority to conserve anymore or? Yeah, if, if it was feasible, then yes. Perhaps searching for funding. Yeah, but it, it I, I would say it pales in comparison with the the river. Yeah. Um, and the you know the the major flow of wetland up through the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. priority but not as high yeah there's some wetland on that property but it's islands or kind of islands i suppose all right <clears throat> the next item is to identify threats to floodplain forests in areas a and d including development dams invasives drought and flooding associated with climate change consider monitoring habitat limiting wreck trails Preserving and protecting areas of suitable slope adjacent to existing floodplains to allow for habitat expansion. Um, so I know, let's see, A and D. Yeah, D is the Mass Point Dam yep, recreation so conserved. site. Yeah. Um, and we did address a lot of that. You know, the trails being too close to the to the river and erosion. a lot of flood floodplain forest there it's kind of upland e i don't know about i think some of that is lower i know just south of a there there's um last time i was looking on granite there were some there's some floodplain forest there, so I assume there's there's some in E. E's the old sod farm, right? Off Salmon Falls Road. Yeah. I think it is in the most of it is in the floodplains. When someone was it sold recently, and we had had people inquire about development there. So does the do those two areas um, of what floodplain forest exists there, does it still feel uh, important to manage and potentially protect those areas? In general, you know, anything between, well, the northern tip of the city down past A, you know, to the center of the city, I think is important for, for that. So if a flood comes through, um, and it gets past A, then we're going to hit the uh, downtown. Good with flood storage and other. Mm -hmm. Could be better. I think there's some um, there's some fields there, some old farms, maybe hay hay pasture. Uh, those areas. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any effort to try to increase flood storage or increase? Not yet, but I'd like to get that in the master plan. I know uh, he just recently approved an effort to make greater flood storage. I live there. Wiped out. Right. I used to live there too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you look at Montpelier, they got wiped out, and um, in response, they're trying to cultivate floodplain forest upstream. All right, increasing flood storage noted. So the next one is to conserve biologically rich peatlands in Area C. 
to protect them with the impacts of from the impacts of development, including increased stormwater runoff that can impact changes in water flow, establish a 300 foot protective buffer of upland, undisturbed land to protect peatland water resources. Um, do you have a 300 foot buffer? We we do ish. Uh, it's a um, it's a no build buffer, and that's new in the latest ordinance. That's an impressive accomplishment. Well done. <laughs> Um, okay, great. So, um, and then I mean, there are areas of conservation in Area C. Does this, does number three still feel relevant conserving that Area C specifically um, related to stormwater runoff? And yeah. Have yeah, you that's seen? a precarious area that's near Home Depot and, uh, and Target. Okay. Have you seen um, many stormwater water flow issues or runoff issues? Um, well, it's kind of concern over the integrity of the of the larger system. Mm -hmm. uh, so outflow, you know, through culverts in that area and. Um, that area was pretty heavily re-engineered, I guess I could say. Um, there were ponds taken out, and um, the flow was changed pretty significantly. So I think that's kind of a variable that we really don't know what might happen there. Maybe potential for a study. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of orange development filling in on 108, which just kind of brackets that section. <clears throat> uh, Route 108, if you look at C and then go westward from there, it's the next major north-south interchange there. Um, and with that starting to fill in and develop a lot more, we've had several major building projects come through there in the past few years. Um, the soils up there are good, they're well drained, but the more impervious you put into it. Okay, so keeping an eye on development and 108 and how that impacts the system. Yeah, yeah some of that is zoned uh, commercial, right? Almost all of 108 is CI. Well, not 108, but with oh. C. Yeah, in through there, yeah, there's a lot of CI in there. And that's also got the old landfill parcel on it, which is a super fun site. Is that black water cutting through it? Yeah. 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 Yep. That's thankfully undevelopable apart from a uh, solar farm that's going in on that spot. But it's still not something that we want to see get disturbed. It's a lot going on around that area. <laughs> All right. The next section is related to outreach and education. So the first recommendation was to host educational natural area walks and events to engage and inform the public. Is that something that you all do or maybe other partners in the city do? Or, or does it feel relevant at all to continue? We have sponsored um, like a UNH um, bird walks and um, Is there an interest you think from folks to It's hard to tell yeah. um. I think so uh, we're working with we're partnering with um, Wild Birds Unlimited oh, yeah. or the um, National uh, Wildlife Federation um, Backyard Habitat Certification, and um, they're interested in doing bird walks. Um, fortunately, Matt Tarr at UNH is booked out for a year, so <laughs> we'll look at alternatives to that. But yeah. he has been in UNH both. 
food is a very willing and you know how to make a birdhouse, how to make birdhouses. So it's all kinds of things that make uh, attraction of this thing and get people excited to use them. Yes. Would it, where there's a survey that we're going to do, would it be something to be part of, like the commission would think would be good feedback to get from the community as part of that survey that we put out? Yeah, I was just going to suggest that. I think that's a good, and, and we'll noodle on how it's, written but you know how do you want to be engaged what types yeah. of activities do you enjoy mm -hmm. those kinds of questions i'd love to incorporate i naturalist we have a, a city project for that sorry can you repeat that yeah. I, i'd like to incorporate i naturalist okay um because so i think that when people start to identify species close to home they they start to own things more yeah Okay, noted. Next is to host a bio blitz or similar rapid data collection activity to build public awareness of natural resources, engage citizen scientists, and collect local data. I know citizen science is um, a big topic right now in the natural resource community as a whole. Is that something that you have done and are interested in continuing? Yeah, still priority. And again, we have the project with National Wildlife Federation and, and iNaturalist. The next is to conduct public outreach and education of best management practices for stormwater management. Um, I'm assuming that's something you've done because of the MS4 designation. Uh, I don't know about outreach in relation to that. So this is another good one for um, DES that could come out and so do a demonstration project that um, shows people how to make uh, bee gardens and, and things like that. You Incorporates, you know, a, a public area, you know, not necessarily a public area, it could be a private property, but just a, a place where the public can see what's going on. Take samples. Yeah. The, the more interest you get, the better people start to protect things, you know, and they understand it. Something that would probably draw a lot of interest too. It seems like every time we have a subdivision coming up on planning, there's always somebody who's concerned about stormwater impact from it. Yeah. So it, it's got a built-in interest. People don't want their basements flooded. Yeah, and so. there's a lot of a lot of. Why this keeps going dark? Sorry. Um, there's a lot of great materials and programs being developed and models in the area. Um, Dana, do you know if you have any staff that attend Seacoast Stormwater Coalition? The that's the um, the public works. Um, the Zoom it's on via yeah. Zoom. Public yeah. Works does um at least yeah. listen in on those. Um, so yeah. So at those meetings, um, they typically provide. They they take the communities that have MS four designations and um, carry them through meeting those obligations. One of which is outreach and engagement. So, I, I that's something to for me to connect with public works on. Yep, city engineer I know um, does at least listen to those. Um, I don't know their level of participation in the program. All right, good to know. Next is seek to draw strong connections between natural resources and quality of life, as well as the economic value of natural resources when promoting protection and preservation. Um, I'd say the first part of that is Clear that that's a priority still with the bio blitz and I naturalists and those other priorities. Um, but is there much of a connection, or has there been between economic opportunities and natural resources? Um, I wouldn't say opportunities as much as um, preservation. Um, I think that um, we do at least passively s send out a message that natural resources are going to prevent some disaster. Um, mm. 
But as far as uh, you know, revenue or anything like that, I don't think we've really discussed it. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering, um, is there much of like an outdoor recreation economy in the city? Let me see. Well, we're, we're um, investigating um, formalizing a, a trail system at Mallee Farm, but there would be no fee for that or anything like that. Um, so there's a, interest in expanding recreational access, but not for revenue. And maybe Anything. that um, trail connectivity to businesses I know that's something that other um, other communities are exploring, just in general, as you know, using trails as both connectivity to be able to get places around the city, but also to promote um, the small businesses in the downtown center and things like that. Well, there's the river walk, but that doesn't extend. Yeah, that's in the master plan to one day hopefully be able to. Um, continue on to other communities through mm. like the mill it the goal is from my understanding is in the future to be able to connect it through those mill properties um but obviously under private ownership there is only so much that we can do right. um a lot of the buildings are right on the water yeah um i people can rent the parks sometime for like private events that's the only thing that um that i'm aware of otherwise i don't know much about any the sports dome will have a trail that connects between that and hilltop fun center but it's going to be very short yeah um it's really trails connecting businesses that i'm aware of public works uh, paved the trail between the high school and um, Bartlett. That's not business to business. Something to continue investigating, perhaps. <clears throat> All right. Uh, number five is to work with garden clubs and volunteers to provide residents with information about backyard habitats and showcase gardens with tours. So it sounds like the backyard habitats certainly has uh, progress made towards that um any interest in tours and gardening garden tours with that or is that something that's yeah i, I think program? that would be helpful oh. did you when you um did you suggest reworking that to uh, examples of um best practice like that for the beauty of it yeah. Yeah, we've got backyard habitats, yeah. but yeah, pollinators could be added in there. Great. I'm going to start going a little faster through these so we can get to goals. <laughs> um, the next one is compile and distribute existing information about habitat conservation and water quality protection for the state, UNH Extension, and other organizations at local events. Um, do you, do you all ever have a represent, representation at local events, like town meeting maybe, <laughs> or other events? We don't have a town meeting. Oh, you're, sorry. Yeah, city, duh. Um, similar events. <laughs> yeah. Just on my brain from yesterday. Yeah. Actively outreach. Larger parcels of land. To be honest, um, unless we've really narrowed it down to something that we're really interested in, we don't have the cycles for it. Yeah. I know some communities wait for something like that. They'll they'll you know reach out to property owners. Periodically, information is distributed in the city newsletter for different conservation topics yeah, um, that could be and items. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's another survey question. You know, how best can we get you information? 
I think some people just feel like it's too, too much hassle to go through to, to change the deed, and surveyed and all that. Sometimes uh, conservation commissions their funds to, to help that close the deal and things like that. Help the legal part of it. All right. Number seven uh, is invite a representative from a local land trust or conservation org to speak at a televised public meeting. Do you all ever have um, speakers at your regular meetings? I know they're televised. Yeah, sometimes. Is that something you'd like to continue? We, when we had a uh, sustainability committee, we had a um, climate change forum series. And uh, unfortunately, the committee disbanded after the first episode of the series, but we had um, uh, the League of Conservation Voters and um, NHPR and uh, showed the Paris to Pittsburgh um, movie. I'd like to continue something like that. I actually reached out recently to um, a filmmaker who skied from Pittsburgh down to Claremont or, some, or tried to ski f from Pittsburgh to Claremont-ish um, to talk about the winters not being as snowy. Um, mm. Didn't hear back from him, but some, something like that I, I'd be interested in. Okay. Keep it on the list. That would, would it be an option to think about partnering with the library? Yeah. Because they do lots of different types of programming and events and maybe – some sort of collaboration would reach their mark. They may have a broader reach potentially. Yeah, I did talk to them and they were interested in it. Just never got any further. Yeah, good to know. Collaboration opportunities. All right, number eight is encourage, encourage residents to contact UNH Extension Forester or Wildlife Specialist to discuss habitat management and opportunities for financial assistance for management activities. Is this something that you've done in the past or would like to continue? We do it one-off. Uh, there's no formalized program for it. Mm. What's that? The library is actually doing a master gardener series um, mm -hmm. right now through June, if anyone's interested. Maybe more opportunity there to connect with the library. All right, the next one is to promote certification programs such as the National Wildlife Federation's Garden for Wildlife program and Sustainable Sites Initiative and recognize local achievements. Um, I'm not familiar with either of these exact programs, but I assume there's something similar to the Backyard Habitat certification. Yep. Okay. Um, and the mayor also did the Monarch Pledge. Yep. And... Um, we recertified for Tree City USA. All right. Number 10 is foster awareness of the global impacts of local actions and increased awareness of environmental responsibility. Um, I think that makes sense, kind of encompasses the following or the leading uh, actions before that. Um, Maybe that's some good language for a goal statement, I think. Yeah. All right. Next section is natural resources inventory and management, non-regulatory strategies. One is to develop a work plan for the CONSCOM and volunteers to conduct, conduct targeted field work to verify accuracy of regional habitat data sets and supplement baseline data compiled for this assessment. Um, I think the iNaturalist initiative probably speaks to that a little bit. Is there any particular work plan of the Conservation Commission? No. To be honest, we, we can barely keep up with um, yeah. our easement monitoring. <laughs> no capacity. Makes sense. Yeah, so maybe that's something that translates more to volunteers. 
mm -hmm. and I naturalist. All right. Number two, as conservation land is acquired, track and compile information and work with SRPC to submit to UNH Granite to be included in the annual statewide conservation lands data set update. Um, I know this is something that we've talked about before, and again, we're happy to continue to support that in whatever way we can. Um, We've done that. All right. Number three, compile existing NHDES water quality data for HUC 12 watersheds to better understand potential sources of contamination and threats to water quality. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether that gets at sampling. Um, one of my concerns is uh, upstream point sources and non-point sources. Um, just considering the more you know the higher frequency of flooding and intensity of flooding. I know that we had a um, was it a regional disaster preparedness. Um, exercise on the on the river they put dye in the water and that sort of thing yep they do a regional I think they had um, they were either having another one or doing not more like a tabletop exercise I think recently um, it's at least collaborative with like Berwick the public works director is one of obviously many that um, does participate in that Assume other emergency response team. So you're going to say probably one of the Yeah. Yeah. But it'd be good to, um, I wouldn't say pinpoint, but um, identify potential hot spots before, you know, a problem happens. All right. Number four, review and survey as necessary conservation lands for which the accuracy of parcel data in the UNH granite conservation lands layer is considered fair, including the former well parcel Mallee Pond and Willard Pond. That should be Willand. Is this something that you have done or would like to continue? We haven't. Sure. I'm not sure about the fair part, what that yeah. means, but um, I've I've just always chalked up that granite isn't precise, <laughs> and uh, there's not much we can do about it. There is. Like we, yeah. Um, in a way, we were, you know, we found we let granite go with the areas that are still still updating. We can help you with that. We got a form to help you fill out. And so if, if uh, an overlay is off center a little bit, that sort of thing, or? I'm not sure. Um, I think Grant is um, our EIS person is uh, definitely being involved with the town that's being started. It, okay. You can't submit it. Uh, it has to be from the town. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's errors in Grant, but it is the best source that we've got. Right. Yeah, so they do they do solicit um or they they do ask that you submit any new conservation lands data each year. Um but in terms of overlays, I'm not sure that there's like a formal process for any of those other layers, but I can definitely ask our mapper. I mean, is there an acceptable level of error on granite? It is whatever is acceptable to the town. Yeah. Yeah. And and on their maps often we'll have the caveat, you know, this is not to be used for regulation or whatever. So it's kind of, you know, defer to the local map in that in that case, but um But it makes sense. They're they're not gonna know things unless you tell them. Right. Yeah, and the and the other piece of this is that, you know, we do produce our regional maps, so um and we you know we do the tax parcel updates with the towns and cities each year. And so um, as long as we're fed that data, then our regional maps are accurate and those online viewers are accurate. 
so yeah but i will ask our mapper for more details on what those processes look like Number five is to identify potential hazards to surface water and groundwater through mapping and monitoring. And I think we've touched on that a bit with yeah. the upstream point and non-point sources. Yeah, maybe that could be consolidated. Yeah, there are definitely some that we can consolidate in each of these um, categories, but we wanted to present them to you as they are. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, the next is to provide the planning board with recommendations for integrating goals, findings, and recommendations of the natural resource assessment into future master plan chapters. Um, I, that's kind of what's going on right now. So <laughs> I'd yeah. say we're there. That will always be there. It's yeah. ongoing. All right, number seven, integrate recommendations for floodplain management into future updates to the city's multi-hazard mitigation plan. that's ongoing all right we're nearing the end number eight collaborate with conservation partners and stakeholders uh, list of stakeholders and adjacent communities to identify opportunities to promote regional conservation and collaborate on large conservation projects and determine species of regional concern to protect um, I know we've briefly talked about the regional collaboration for those unfragmented parcels does the species of concern feel important or is it more um, like that habitat connectivity and co wildlife corridors uh, species of concern are important we haven't identified them we we could use a bio blitz or two yeah okay need to be identified All right, number nine, evaluate the need to undertake an in-depth natural resource inventory. Does that f still feel like uh, something you'd like to do or are you leaning more towards the volunteer base sort of day? I, I think we're on the hook for it under the RSA. Yeah. I think we're duty bound to have a full-fledged NRI. Do you not have one right now? It's natural resources assessment, so like okay. an NRI light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so continue. Uh, number 10 is utilize findings from the natural resource assessment and other research data collection and public input sessions to develop a long range conservation plan. And I haven't seen a long range conservation plan, so I'm assuming that doesn't exist no i mean th that was the thrust of the preserve summersworth um, yep. committee but um or commission um that hasn't been officially rolled out but so that's that's basically what it is a long-range plan ongoing Uh, number 11, complete an updated natural resource assessment or inventory in five to 10 years. So just talked about that. That's still, still a goal or action item. Well, the natural resource assessment is already done, right? Yeah. But, but it's a natural resource inventory that maybe should be replaced here? Or are you saying that you need another assessment in five to 10 years? Um, I can't, I can't speak for everyone. Um, I would prefer to do an inventory. Um, we were, we did plan to do, to redo the assessment within five to 10 years. I think okay. that's written into the assessment somewhere. So we should keep that in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then number 12, support increased funding for conservation measures. I'm assuming Yay. <laughs> that's ongoing for sure. Wouldn't we love that? <laughs> and then the last section here is regulatory strategies. So the first one is a review existing regulations to identify opportunities to integrate habitat sensitive site design and development practices 
into existing and future land use regs to mitigate negative impacts to wildlife during and after construction through buffers, stormwater management, adequately sized culverts, native landscaping, and minimization of soil compaction and removal. Um, I know you've completed some of that, at least uh, your stormwater related regulations. Um, and I, I believe you mentioned some landscaping regulations as well. Are there any other relevant pieces here that I should note? Yeah, well, we did the, we rewrote the, um, the wetland ordinance. Oh, yep, yep. And um, part of it, we created a tree ordinance, and part of that is um, recommendations for landscaping. We're talking about hardening that somewhat. Um, Jeremy, any other? Uh, we've got the conservation subdivision um, piece in, which works reasonably well. Um, on the landscaping front, we do tend to push that at planning pretty heavily for commercial projects coming in. And we found generally developers are pretty open to it. Um, they don't seem to much care as long as it doesn't hit them too many bumps. Um, Nothing else springs to mind. And we have a subcommittee for um, culvert assessment working with DOT and Fish and Game, I think. And is that a subcommittee of the Planning Board? Of the Conservation, Conservation Commission. Commission. That's neat. All right. Number two, refer to voluntary guidelines for developers, design principles, and standards that can be incorporated into site plan and subdivision ordinances, such as performance standards uh, that are recommended in Innovative Land Use Planning Handbook. Um, and then it lists some there. Um, so I assume that you don't have an overlay for wildlife habitat but you did just mention the tree ordinance and that landscaping, so I think that relates. This kind of, I don't, I don't know if this is relevant, but would this be the sort of thing where if um, someone applies for a um, con conditional use permit where they're provided handouts with um, information about different programs and strategies? Yeah, I think that's a strategy. That's a strategy that could be considered. Um, yeah, how I don't do know you if they'll just get tossed in there? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. How do you give teeth to that, as they say? Um, yeah, that's something we yeah. can. We'll have periodic different things available in the office. Like I think there was something you had me put up one about fertilizer or something. To be quite honest, I don't remember. <laughs> I did put it up, though. <laughs> something about best management practices Thank or something. You. You're welcome. It's a couple years ago, though. Yeah, and those are, you know, you can also consider adding criteria to your conditional use permits of, like, you know, you need to have the, uh, you need to use green infrastructure to the maximum extent practicable if you are uh, applying for a CUP, like, things of that nature. So, mm investigate that point. All right, number three, consider using tools like conservation subdivisions, which you do, and density transfer credits to ensure habitat sensitive design to reduce habitat loss, fragmentation, impacts of roads, and effects of impervious cover on aquatic habitat. Um, is there anything specific for aquatic habitat or is this just I think that's more of a general concern. Yeah. And then do you use density transfer credits? No, we have the conservation subdivision, but um, yeah, I'd like to see more focus on acceptance of higher density. All right. Or consider adopting an overlay zone to protect high quality wildlife habitat. Does that still feel like a relevant action to you all? Considering your other overlays or ordinances? Like a zoning zone? 
Is that what that's getting at? Yes. That'd be great. I don't think it would float. <laughs> so perhaps it's um, so some wetland ordinances, and I haven't reviewed yours fully, but some uh, reference the functions and values of the wetlands, and that relates to you know the habitat in those areas. Um, yeah, so maybe there's another way to get at this through the existing zones. Mm -hmm. You yeah, haven't designated any prime wetlands. That's something that's always been in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how that would play into um, an overlay. Yeah, it sounds like this would be a good one to keep. Um, you know, it, whether, or not, whether or not it will pass um, is a different matter, but, right. you know, an overlay zone can, can be very helpful for protection in situations like this. Do you know any communities that have it? Not off the top of my head. Uh, Autumn, do you? Yeah, I feel like I was just reading about one the other day, but I don't know that it's in our region. It, it's definitely not. It's California, maybe. No, I, I mean like SRPC region. I think it was in New Hampshire. I think I think they do exist. I'd have to check um, the annual survey. Um, but yeah, I can look. I can look for an example of that. All right, number five, consider adopting a forest management district to promote the protection of floodplain forests. So I know you mentioned your tree ordinance. Does that mention floodplain forests? No. Or anything of that nature? Does that still feel relevant and maybe an update to consider? Maybe. Well, if we're talking about um, possibility of increased flooding in different areas then I think it would be good to keep it in place because we're going to need those <clears throat> we're going to need those floodplains um, yeah yeah for us um, so keep that one on the list and last but not least establish standards for green infrastructure and tree canopy cover to reduce impervious cover associated with development and to improve water filtration and infiltration reduce the urban heat island effect and provide wildlife habitat um, and I'm assuming this is somewhat the intent of your tree ordinance, uh, the impervious cover, I mean, uh, canopy cover. Yeah, um, it doesn't really come down hard on any of those criteria. Um, I think the tree inventory may be a, a better starting point for that. Yeah. All right, that makes sense to me. Well, thank you all for bearing with me and getting through that. <laughs> I feel much better about knowing where you're all at and where to go from here. We passed the 25 minutes that I said that would take. So are you willing to give me another 30 for goals? I am. Adam, do you, is your voice okay? You want me to take this over? Or? If you want to. Okay, <laughs> happy to. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> All right. Um, so we've got some goals um, that we're, we put together um, be, by looking at the master plan chapter, the natural resource assessment, and the preser preserve summer's worth document. Um, kind of merged these as best we could um, and came up with 13. Um, First, and so please, uh, you know, let me know if these sound realistic or if you, there are, you want us to wordsmith them a bit. Um, but number one, we have conduct a comprehensive review of local land use regulations. I think that's kind of a no-brainer, you know, um, a regulatory review, you know, just to see where there might be some, some barriers, um, uh, some changes that could be made. Um, any comments on that or yeah um, I I copied and pasted a bunch of stuff in, into um, into a, a word doc on this um, under each different number I, I can email that to you if okay. you want yeah that'd be lovely yeah. um, um, 
Okay. But I can talk about it here too. Uh, it's just a, a lot of a lot of stuff. I don't know if yeah, and this is time you have. This is just, just a reminder. This is like this was just to give you all something to react to and kind of what we yeah. could pull from. So yeah, by all means, go ahead. If you'd like. Um, I don't know if this is the same. Did you? I did change, change two of them it? after talking with staff today. Okay. Um, so you'll see the ones the print that I handed you. Um, that first one there, a comprehensive review of local land use regs. That it was the one that changed. And then um, number 11 also changed to speak more to natural resources. Okay. Well, under one of them must have been alternatives to conventional subdivisions. Yep. That was number one. Um, so I had amend the ordinance to require the Conservation Commission review of conservation subdivision plans before approval. Currently, it's just planning board. Uh, amend the ordinance to shift oversight of compliance with conservation sub subdivision management plans to the city under code enforcement. Require homeowners associations to provide funding for this oversight. Let me know if I'm going too fast. You're good. Um... So I and I don't want to cut you off, but um, some of those do sound more like actions. Yeah. And so I just want to make sure we're also thinking about like the overarching goal that these actions would be listed under. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those those sound great, um, and certainly a good place to start with actions. Um, yeah, when we put this together, we had to we tried to stay away from things that we thought were actions for, you know, and just keep it to the goals, you right. know, the the actions will take a much longer time to to put together and to to for us to think about. Okay. Um, I, I definitely still want <laughs> that all those comments that you prepared. Okay. I, I would yeah. love those. Um, but so I guess uh, hearing those maybe does a goal feel like uh, collaborating more with the planning board on uh, on regulatory reviews in general. Uh, maybe firming up the firming up the process from soup soup to nuts, for lack of a better term, for uh, conservation um, subdivisions from. Uh, designation to monitoring yeah so it's so uh, adding back in that goal about you know revisiting the conservation subdivision specifically sounds like those might have that might have multiple actions underneath it Um, and then for invasive species, uh, Dale is our subcommittee chair on that. I propose that uh, the city adopt an invasive species management plan. Okay. All right, um, so that was number two. Number three, develop strategies to protect air quality. This was mentioned in a couple of, of those sources. Um, we, we can certainly expand on that if we choose to, but it seemed like it seemed important to pull that out of there and put it as a goal. Um, number four, protect the quality and quantity of water resources. Again, that, that's... Uh, a good goal and, and underneath that you're going to have several recommendations or actions strategies um, <clears throat> number five cultivate environmental leadership for the future um, that totally fits in with some of the um, outreach that we talked about earlier um, number six seek seek to conserve lands that will create unfragmented parcels and wildlife corridors again we, we talked about that a lot um, increase awareness of the city's natural resources through outreach and education. Number eight, support biodiversity and preserve high-quality habitat. 
Number nine, develop criteria to assist in decisions for acquisition of land for conservation. Uh, number 10, plan for equitable and sustainable growth through the lens of climate resilience. Number 11, collaborate with neighboring communities on building habitat connectivity and unfragmented unfragmented tracts of open space. Number 12, prepare for increasing frequency and intensity of extreme weather and natural hazards. And 13, develop resilient stormwater infrastructure and policy that integrates uh, with the natural landscape. So these are, you know, it's a good list of goals to, to start with. You know, we can certainly work um, and do some wordsmithing on that. Um, <clears throat> and again, as, as we mentioned, many of those tie right in with, with some of the um, recommendations that Autumn just read. Anybody have blaring, glaring uh, comments that any of those should be stricken or, or additional ones that aren't here? Seems like a pretty comprehensive outline. Yeah. Well, there were good resources to go from. You know, it's pretty easy to pick through them and, and find these. So you guys have a, have a very good start. Adam, do you have anything else? Um, I think if this feels like a good start to you all and there's no topic areas missing, um, then Lisa and I are good to kind of pull the recommendations from tonight, from our last meeting, um, and start firming up goals and actions for future workshops. So yeah, are there any topic areas you feel like weren't addressed? Was this from you or you? Okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Uh, if you're all good with that list, um, we can continue to wordsmith behind the scenes and um, start prepping. Actions will come much later um, once we've conducted some more community outreach. And you'll see this last page that I gave you all um, as requested at the last meeting just kind of outlines the process in a teeny bit more detail, um, potentially what meetings we could take up with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Um, and then I also outlined uh, when those community engagement activities would occur. So if you all would like right now, we could... Um, think about a community workshop date um, to, to set. And then I can discuss with city staff if that date works and also with the planning board. Um, and that would be for uh, not just the boards, but for residents and really directed at engaging people in the chapter. So in, in that context, um, the meeting on the 30th, is that a workshop meeting or a regular meeting with the planning board? 20th. 20th is the 20th. Yep. Next week is a workshop meeting with the planning board that's at 530 and that's focusing on the vision, vision chapter section. Okay. So it would be separate from that. It would be a different meeting so that we that's talked. That's the 20th. And then there's a, the 30th is a joint meeting, right? I don't have anything for the 30th at this no. point. I don't think. Not we weren't planning on anything. That. Yeah. So what what Autumn's talking about is a is a workshop. So we, you know we it would take a little while to pull things together. You know. Yeah. I just and to do I some wanted to outreach. look at what was already on the calendar and see where we can squeeze it in. Yeah. So next next week will also help us prepare the uh, the community workshop materials. Um, we're hoping that we could solidify a date uh, within the first week of May. Some communities choose to do night workshops and some choose to do Saturday morning workshops. <laughs> so it's kind of all about <clears throat> what you feel would be the greatest turnout or would suit the needs of community members.
probably something at the high school or that area. I don't know how to drum people up. Well, one of the things that, that we can do is, um, you know, we can uh, have a draw from, you know, that something that will attract folks, you know, like a presenter, um, you know, of some topic of interest that we come up with. Mm -hmm. And then we can, you know, do event, you know, do um, uh, activities around that. So That sounds good, yeah. We, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, we can put, to, we, we do put together outreach material for both uh, social media and for print, um, you know, so it's advised to put it on different Facebook pages and, you know, websites and things like that. So we, we, we've got that all covered, so. Yeah, so you don't worry about that. Right. <laughs> yeah, we just need uh, a good date, really, a good date and time, and then we can take care of the rest. And then um, you'll see on that page at your next meeting, we're hoping to kind of go over that agenda with you all and what that meeting might look like. Well, I think if you have a good draw, then Saturday morning would probably work well. Um, but I may not be the expert on that. So that'd be either Saturday, May 3rd or May 11th. What do you think, Dale? Friday. Well, May 11th, um, Mother's Day is the 12th. Yeah. So oh, that's a good point. Leave. Yeah. And that would be a high graduation like time frame, too, from colleges oh, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely. Typically. So maybe May 4th, then? It's right that before mean? Cinco de Mayo. Uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's uh, Hazard, household hazardous waste day as well. Oh, is it? Is it Earth Day? No, it's in April. All right. Right? It's usually on, it's usually on Earth Day. Hazardous Isn't that Star day. Wars Day, too? May, yeah. May 4th. May 4th be right. with you. May the 4th be with you. Come protect your natural resources. Everybody come in costume. <laughs> yeah, it works for me. Okay. All right, great. So... We can talk with city staff and plan that out a little bit more uh, and make sure it works with everything else going on in the city and find a venue. Um, I already mentioned the high school, so we can investigate that. Yeah, there's the black box theater as well at the technical center. At what, what's it called? The black box theater. We held the housing workshop there. Okay. We'll get details from Angie on that. Yep. Okay, great. Well, that's awesome. Um, I feel like we've accomplished a lot tonight. And um, yeah, Scott, feel free to send me that Word document. And also, um, if you have any comments on you know the timeline and how we're looking, feel free to me notes on that as well as everyone else here you know email is always open to you as well as Lisa's um, so yeah thank you all so much for your time tonight is there anything else I can answer for you no nope. thank you very much thank you thanks guys all right So, is there any new business before the commission? No, none for me. Okay. Old business, review the rules of procedure. I remembered to provide them to you all this yeah. month. So we're looking for a vote on those tonight to adopt them. Dale, have you had a chance to go through them? No. Do you want another shot? I, I didn't have a chance to. You didn't either? No, I, I broke it up. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue to next regular meeting. 
Okay, there's a motion to continue till the I'll next meeting. I'll second it. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, it's continued. Item B, review of the recommended native tree list proposed revisions. And uh, we wanted Kevin here for that, and he's not here, so we can move on to C, easement monitoring, of which I have nothing new. Anybody else? Um, any correspondence regarding old business? No? No. Member items, subcommittee items, and reports. Wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. That's me. I don't have anything on that. Invasives plan, subcommittee report. Ms. smith Kenyon. Well, I was hoping to have something tonight, but I don't. Okay. Um, exploration of formal conservation of Mallee Farm City Parcel. Um, Kevin and Dale and I met with the mayor to talk about this and um, run some ideas by him. We are considering uh, a proposal to extend um, a portion of the currently designated um, conservation parcel. It's not officially conserved, but it's called some circles conservation land, the recreational portion of Mallee Farm. Anyway, to extend that along the river toward the water treatment plant a little um, and then include some of the wetland habitat on the other side of the Valley Farm Road. Um, so we, we've got to get together and kind of formalize that and work with planning on it. Um, Kevin sent me a a photo with a, a circle on it, you know, a couple circles where he thought it might be, you know, approximately where we wanted to propose, but uh, we've got to get a little more precise. Um, City Tree GPS Inventory Project, Mr. Breyer. Anybody who hasn't seen the email, Jackson Rand, most recent email. He originally, Doug, is your mic is your mic on? I don't know if everybody's got the latest email CC from uh, Jackson Rand, SRPC. Uh, we had been talking with him about the cost to do the tree survey based on what it, the city of Dover had paid for their um, yes, portion of the city of Dover. Originally, they came in at, I want to say, $6,000 for what they did in Dover and stated that they could probably do summer's worth for somewhere between five and $6,000. We, the original note that went to him said we wanted to do the whole city. Uh, the most recent email I got back from him, just to paraphrase a little bit, uh, it seems like it's too much. It's overwhelming apparently to them. And the cost they're saying now went from $6,000 to 100 plus thousand. And they would have to do it totally with SRPC uh, surveyors. So we're sitting with what our next step has to be. What I was thinking was we take certain streets in the city of Summersworth, not all of them, take the main roads and start with those. Uh, Scott mentioned to me earlier maybe taking a section or a, a ward of the city and doing all of the streets, including residential uh, streets. So I guess it just comes down to a matter of what we want 
to do. We're going to have to downsize the project considerably. Uh, I guess uh, in one manner to find out what this is going to cost us for the whole thing. But I don't have a problem doing either way. If we want to do the streets, if we want to do a section of the city, it's fine with me. We just need to make a decision as to what we want to do. Yeah, and we extended that email thread. And um, no, it was just Doug and um, and Jackson and me. Um, I had asked for clarification about the gap between estimates. You know, the hundred thousand plus was a little astronomical. Um, and he did come back and say that the Dover project was about sixty five hundred, but the study area slash geography was only the central business district of Dover, so a very small portion of the entire city. Um, you can look on the um, SRPC site at the Dover dashboard to see what it is. It looks pretty good to me. Um, and um, I don't think that we, I don't think we we're ever gunning for anything more extravagant than that. Um, but so I think if we outline some areas for him, some streets and or blocks, then um, maybe he can give us a, a more solid answer. It can't it can't be anywhere near a hundred thousand dollars, especially if Dover's whole project was sixty five hundred. Yeah, given the volume of what. Dover did for 6500 and what that quote came back with for us there. I'm kind of wondering if we want to push this back to their court a little bit and say, here's the center of Dover, the equivalent, or Summersworth, the equivalent of Dover's business district that you had covered in that one. Yeah. How much of this can we get done for 6500 Right. Or for eight, given that there's been some time and presumably some increase in costs. How many years has it been? Uh, so over, about three, three years. Okay, so about 2021. Yeah, so some increase is reasonable, but... Yeah, over a tenfold increase. Yep. Yeah, about an order and a half of magnitude up. That's... Unless they think that we want to survey every tree in the city, that doesn't strike me as having a lot of basis. Like literally every tree in the city, private property and not. Yeah, so I think if we if we really get um, detailed in the scope for him, then we might get a much better answer. So you and I can can get together and take a look at the map. I was thinking too, folks were mentioning like some areas of town that are, say. Not tree less, but they don't have a lot of cover. The the, the poorer sections of town or whatever, maybe look at in those areas, and that way you, you would kind of get an inventory of what's there and maybe what you might want to be there. Yeah, negative data is important too. Right. You know, what's not there? Right. I mean, it could be. We, we can go and survey the trees, but right. You know. It's important to say this tree has no trees. <laughs> to sit down and okay. figure something out. All right. Any other comments? All right. Next item is the discussion of tree replacement at Summersworth Plaza. Um, Sean, do you want to entertain that or wait? I'd like to wait for Kevin. Okay. Uh, discussion of revision of recommended tree species in the tree tree ordinance, chapter thirty-three. I guess that'll wait as well. Can Another, we edit the agenda? It seems like we have a redundancy there. Is this the same thing? No. Not as five B, five B, and B. E6, those are the same items, right? 
No, not really, because one's specific to the tree replacements in um, at the plaza, and the other is about overall they're, species recommended in. No, tree I think they're you're both right. the things that Shane provided, though. Five yeah, B and then five E dot six. Five B and five E six are both items that Shane Conlon provided for recommendations yeah. to replace the tree species list. Yeah, okay. that is redundant. Okay. Yeah. We'll look. At, we'll try. We'll try to remember next month. All right. <laughs> no redundancy. Um, <laughs> you know, the old business that may be that may come before the commission. I did um, talk with um, Wild Birds Unlimited again, and they're still interested in volunteering with the Conservation Commission. Um, so we're brainstorming some some potential projects. Um, one thing that they had mentioned earlier was an interest in doing a an adopt a spot and I said that that may be helpful if they um, if they did it with um, habitat um, and pollinator uh, species in mind and maybe got it certified by uh, the NWF and then you know we could advertise it as um, you know part of the, the city project some other ideas were um, helping with containment of invasives at Mallee Farm, um, you know, encroachment on the open space and the bird populations there. Um, hosting, um, you know, a documentary film or a guest speaker. Um, I forget, I, I mentioned a couple other things, but I did, I sent her in Mike Bobinski's direction for the adopt a spot. Um, they may want to do more with us, but we'll see. We may be able to utilize them for some sort of, if they want to participate in that public meeting too, for the natural, as oh, like yeah. maybe even a table or something like that, depending on the setup of that public outreach meeting that we have for the chapter. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to participate in some way, um, that way we can mention it to Autumn next and Lisa next time we meet with them if that's something the commission thinks what they would be interested in partnering to yeah even if they just want to put a flyer up yeah yeah some sort of informational table or something and then we so the planning board has a workshop at 530 on um, next Wednesday uh, the 20th the Conservation Commission is invited to be one of the participants in that workshop. Um, it's working on the vision chapter. We'd really greatly appreciate if anyone can attend. This is a great opportunity for those collaborations with the planning board to start having collaborative work on our documents and things like that. I think that would go towards some of the goals we talked about tonight and working on getting good chapters together from input of lots of boards. The 20th, so Wednesday, 5.30, here. Yes, next week, week from today. 5.30? 5.30, yep, they're doing it prior to their meeting. That'd be great. You can stay and see Jeremy act as planning board chair. It's the same hat, you just cocks it differently. <laughs> All right. And treasurer's report. And I got a text from Mr. Degler. If you try to zoom on your texts, it increases the font, but not the picture. Okay, so January 31st, 2024, balance forward, $260,000 and, I'm sorry, $260,792.18. Interest received, $1,107.65. Ending balance, 
as of February 29th, 261000 $899.83. That's it for the agenda. Anything further? Motions to adjourn. I make a, <clears throat> excuse me. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay, there's a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 741.